so here's Ben and Brian uh, translating J to cinema <laughs> Hey guys, I'm Ben Kolak and I'm Brian Ashby. We're gonna try and be fast and interesting and relevant. <laughs> We're here to talk to stuff you guys are interested in too. So if anything piques your interest, just anyone ask a question or ask us to develop it more, uh, just like yell out or, or wave your hand or, or something like that. Um, <laughs> So uh, we made this documentary web series with the PBS uh, uh, affiliate in Chicago um, over the past two years. And uh, since we kind of started the project working from data about the schools, which as uh, uh, many of you do the awesome products you do here know there's quite a lot of, and it's something that's used a lot in evaluating education, all kinds of other other things. Um, uh, when we were making it, uh, we became aware of all the great apps that you guys have been, been doing here and really played an important role in terms of as, as we thought about the show, but also started thinking about what are some of the things that maybe you can't do with data or some other places where cinema and other forms, other mediums can help make a better picture or a more relevant picture or more uh, uh, um, <coughs> useful uh, tool in some respects to help people think about what's going on in, 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 in education today. So uh, I think it might be a struggle to hear this with the speaker set up, but let me just play a quick um, snapshot of a, a, a trailer from the series to give you some sense of what it's like. And maybe I'll do some oh. fakey. Uh, That's on, I'll turn on. Creative audio. Yeah, some creative if it's not really working. Yeah. I mean, I've been here for nine years. Everything that I didn't like, I found a way to make it work for me. I was behind, and now I'm actually close to what I grew up You don't have to like it because you don't have it. So that just gave a, a, a little bit of a picture of the show, but it essentially, <clears throat> let me turn this off, there we go, uh, follows five um, eighth grade students across the city and the suburbs of Chicago um, and kind of paints a portrait of them uh, during their eighth grade year of uh, school. And uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, about what I can <laughs> say for now. There's a lot more I can say. Um, and uh, where, where I want to start with this is that, uh, as I'm sure you guys are all familiar, education is often uh, seen as this kind of focal point that uh, uh, people key in on as both uh, the cause of or potential solution for so many uh, uh, social concerns, like big picture things like inequality and poverty, uh, violence and crime, and uh, uh, health and uh, uh, illness. And we can go into a lot more uh, detail. I'm certainly not an expert on any of these, any of these things. Um, but uh, when you talk about data and education, I think the question is always is, are you capturing what matters when you're trying to measure education so much? Or is it just the things that are easy to measure? And this is something that I think you get when you look at all kinds of data, you know, analytics me measurements. There always tends to be some disconnect between what we're measuring and maybe what would be more useful or more uh, uh, relevant. But, so that was really where we saw that um, there'd be an opportunity for something like documentary, another medium that can be a lot more holistic in terms of how it represents character, uh, 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 motivation, uh, a situation scenario, to help um, maybe uh, make possible other ways of thinking about what's going on, other ways of uh, possibly measuring or uh, theorizing about uh, how education works today, what these things are that we think are issues, what's causing them, what the solution can, can look like. Uh, yeah, that can give a little spiel, too. Uh, we're documentary filmmakers in Chicago, and part of the reason uh, we're here is because we made a short documentary about the Open Go Pack Night, uh, which <laughs> we uh, admire greatly. <laughs> Though I'm sure this presentation is a little unusual, but uh, yeah, we, we do work on a variety of social issues and cultural topics, and we make commercials to eat. And, um, <laughs> we, we got a commission from uh, WTTW to work on this uh, new initiative called PBS Digital Studios, which gets uh, public television stations to make web content um, to sort of catapult into the brave new world of the internet. 
And uh, we got a, a, a kind of remit to do a series about education, and we could uh, essentially structure it how we wanted to, and uh, we ended up thinking that, yeah, we wanted to make a, a series that would um, compare and contrast a lot of people's experiences, so we ended up with five schools. There's three in the city and uh, one in the south suburbs and one in the north suburbs. And um, yeah, and I, I'd say too, a big focus of this was, uh, a big impetus for making the show was a realization that we're kind of pretty far along into this era of uh, school reform and uh, people who have the data sort of end up making their special sauce for uh, pedagogical philosophies and certain schools get built for these reasons and certain, you know, get closed for these reasons. And uh, so we very much wanted to just look at how families navigate the system today in a kind of era where there are so many choices. What's it like to be 14 uh, in that, that time? And uh, yeah, and, and I'd say too, we had a, a real focus to try to address these disparities and inequality, we, we see why are they still recreated every day, uh, and that's, that was a big part of the reason we picked people from so many backgrounds, too, is that observing their daily experience, uh, maybe we could show something about how different kind of pedagogies prepare students for different kind of lives. So the uh, uh, different schools that we looked at were um, to look at high performing and low performing, and this was as we got from uh, ISAT data. And of course, that's something that you can definitely take a lot of issue with how these things are uh, uh, kind of uh, constructed. But we wanted to uh, look at the two to see like what are other things going on that maybe you don't capture in these kind of metrics that define how these schools are uh, uh, performing. And um, it was a, uh, 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 as I was saying, uh, uh, some of the factors, you know, Character motivations, emotions, maybe the design and architecture of the buildings and the spaces, community and relationships, how experience is structured within the, the school and talked about, and um, how progress is also a, a, a signal. So, um, with this as our uh, a starting point, we had kind of a big impossible challenge of on a very short amount of time engaging schools want to participate in our in our uh, uh, project. And uh, we began, as I was saying, with reviewing the school performance uh, data, and we also wanted to look at uh, income and uh, demographic uh, data, as you were saying, to try and get as kind of wide a range of schools as as we could, but also ones that would hopefully show some uh, 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 breadth of uh, uh, what Chicago land looks like uh, uh, today. And these were some of the places that we looked at: the Census Portal, City Data, State of Illinois Report Cards, Chicago Tribune uh, uh, Report Cards. Um, our next step was reaching out to the uh, different schools and. Um, Help keep uh, track of the, the process. We had a bunch of different people on our team, each of whom was kind of tasked with making the pitch. And uh, uh, we also tried to find somebody from within those uh, uh, communities that they were uh, reaching out to so that they'd already have some familiarity and, and comfort level with the, the people they were engaging with. Um, and part of our pitch was that it'd be an opportunity to either showcase some kind of uh, uh, high performance that the school is uh, being uh, praised for, or if they have some new methods that they're implementing to try and raise their performance, that this would be a great opportunity to showcase that. There's also a lot of concerns about muck breaking, that we were going to come in and try and expose something wrong about the, the school. So really through the course of the, the project, that was something that we were always uh, 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 negotiating, so, so to speak. You know, uh, of course, as a, a documentary filmmaker, as a journalist, if you discover some horrible atrocity within a school, you definitely have a, a commitment to uh, expose it, bring to light, something like that. But that wasn't our task with this particular uh, project. And it also helped a lot with the project that we were working with with PDFs, with WTTW as a as a partner that that uh, met a certain degree of uh, a review with the process, and that we had a, a good partner that so we were uh, participating with. Um, and after we heard back from some schools that were willing to uh, cooperate, we thought about, um, okay, how easy is it going to be working through this? I, I don't know if any of you in, in doing data work has had any uh, engagement with the Chicago Public Schools uh, Central Communication Office, but they're, <laughs> um, uh, they have a lot to manage. They, they have a lot to, to manage. So in contrast to, say, a small suburban school district, uh, uh, those are a lot more immediate in terms of getting back to us and 
you know, acknowledging our, our request. So that was definitely one of the things that, that, that we considered, even working with um, uh, uh, some of the charter school networks in the city. They were also in a lot of ways uh, a lot more responsive, so that was something that we weighed in. As well as uh, geographic uh, proximity, uh, which I think is basically why we ended up uh, shooting with the school in Wilmette as opposed to a school out in uh, a say Na Naperville or some of the other suburbs uh, that would have been an hour or two for us to, to be driving in and out to. Yeah, I mean, I could sort of speak to this. I mean, like documentaries kind of 90% about casting. So, uh, you know, we wanted to pursue all these kind of lofty, heady issues that we were <laughs> listing in the past couple slides. But, you know, how are you going to do that in an entertaining way through the experience of a couple students? So that's where this kind of <clears throat> demographic research came in to set the stage correctly, to pick four or five schools that would actually contrast each other in a meaningful way in, uh, in our own kind of um, inept hacking social scientist sort of way. <laughs> we put together, you know, like the quantitative and qualitative uh, factors we were interested in, like this school sort of meets um, the location and performance uh, attributes we're interested in. Uh, but there's something really interesting and terrifying where they make the kids walk on lines paint on the ground, or, uh, or you know, the, there's these interesting things about the community. Um, and then we basically approached, like Ben said, maybe 50 schools. Or then we found the, the five that actually were uh, really intrigued to participate. Um, so this, uh, what's going on with these slides? I think this is uh, supposed to be engaging the students. Uh, so uh, one of the big things uh, we thought about was having, of course, a diverse student body that we were representing in the, the show, but also uh, uh, even in our kind of internet, uh, 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 YouTube, Facebook uh, 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 time, the, the kind of psychological process of a student being in a documentary that other people are or saying we talked uh, quite a bit with school counselors and principals about what kind of students do you think like could deal with that and for whom it would be actually like a positive experience to be sharing themselves and their world and their life and that they'd be excited about now and hopefully wouldn't be too embarrassed about three years from now or something along the, those lines. So that, that was definitely a, a, a process as well. And we shot with a number of students as well for a day before we narrow it down to the, the five students that we uh, uh, focus in on the show to see how they dealt with the process of having us be with them when they woke up in the morning and go to school and follow them through class during the, 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 the course of the, the day. And of course, the, the family's also uh, uh, being up for the, 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 the process. Um, one of the things that we keyed in on that we definitely didn't initially want to was that we followed five essentially high-performing students. And this was a big concern with the, the five different schools that we were talking with that they didn't want a low-performing student representing them. Um, and it was a compromise, essentially, that we came to in terms of getting access and being able to, to, to make the show and the, the time frame that we needed to deliver it. Um, but in some ways, I think it also provided a good control in that all the students were kind of at a, a, a similar level, so that it provided more of a, uh, a comparison of the school against the school, as opposed to, say, the, the different strengths and, and whatnot that the, the students had. Uh, and um, a couple of the strategies we used to get the students to, to buy in and maintain co cooperation was that we gave them cameras so that they could have some control over their representation and shoot other stuff that they thought was cool or interesting or involve more of their friends in the, the, the process and uh, constantly uh, checking in with them about any concerns they might have about the, the show or anything that they wanted us to come shoot or how they were, were feeling about it. It was definitely a... Uh, 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 Part of the way through the process, we were very pleased that we decided to have a separate person in charge of managing each student because if it was just one or two of us, it would have been thanks too much of a psychological, emotional uh, negotiation. Do you want to say anything else about the, the students? Um, well, yeah, I could, could say uh, this would probably lead into this well. Um, I, I think if we're doing a 30 or 40 minute presentation, we show you some of the show, but uh, we, we don't really have time. It's on the internet and we want you to go watch it. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, like like I said at the start, you know, we're really interested in uh, showing kids experiences in this kind of era of uh, school choice, as it's called, which, depending on who you are, can give opportunity or, or take it away in, in equal measure. So we were um, really keen to understand the uh, all the families' motivations and really get to know them and try to 
convey that in an honest way. And so we ended up working with these kids who were at the top of their class, sort of for the reasons Ben was saying, because that's how the schools wanted to spin it to us. But then it also works well because to make this show more about this topic of, uh, you know, you're 13, 14, and you, if you're encouraged to be a good student, it's going to make it in life. You're supposed to be considering selective enrollment, charter, IB, art school, military school, uh, you know, all of these things. And that's how we came to that. But we wanted to show um, people with quite different backgrounds and values approaching that process. So that involved, you know, families were saying, you're going to apply to selective enrollment, but otherwise we're sending you to a charter school because we don't like our neighborhood school. Or you're going to apply to selective enrollment, or otherwise we're going to take you to suburbs. Or you're going to apply to selective enrollment, or otherwise the neighborhood school is actually great. <laughs> um, and uh, it is well another family who uh, was a common strategy to uh, have part of the one parent in the suburbs, one in the city, to kind of utilize both systems. Uh, we were keen to get those motivations uh, across and uh, yeah, not hit the viewer over the head with them in terms of numbers, but to set the scene that way in terms of what it's like to go through it. Really like you saw in that 30-second uh, clip at the beginning, the work of the documentary is finding kind of these sound bites and these images, these gestures that really stand for something larger, you know, and kind of capture concise uh, boil down into these things that one like remembers or can stand in for these longer themes. And so that, you know, representation process is really about like finding the same kind of trends or juxtapositions that you do, I think, in a lot of other work when you're analyzing data or, or presenting something like that. And for us, it's really a matter of what are the things that keep coming up, you know, when you're shooting the footage, when you hear selected enrollment uh, 40 times, and you're like, geez, this should probably be a theme in the in the show, um, but definitely some of the things that emerged from the, the course of a, a, a shooting was um, uh, that uh, uh, teacher training was something that came up uh, 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 quite a bit as we talked with the, the, the students' teachers. Uh, test taking, of course, kind of the uh, the role that data plays in terms of framing people's experience rather than, than capturing it. It's, it's such a strange kind of uh, a loop. Uh, the, the role of discipline in schools and particularly how it uh, Contrast so markedly, and that was one of the things that we really tried to highlight in the, 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 the show, the, the different way that discipline is implemented and uh, uh, focused on in, in, in different uh, schools. Um, the role of uh, religion, um, even though it was all in, in, in public schools and in certain of the communities played a much larger role in terms of how people thought about who they were, what they did, why they participated in school. Phones, uh, oh my gosh. Uh, and of course, uh, a lot of folks have that tablets and uh, uh, the perennial uh, uh, role of sports in, in, in education. So Would you the, like to elaborate on phones? Like, what do you mean? Just like they have them, they want them? Right. So, some of the uh, striking contrast, uh, if I can say it like really uh, concisely, uh, at uh, one of the, the charter schools we shot at, at Uno, they have a, a policy where they would, when they came into the festival, they put their uh, uh, <coughs> Phone in a uh, a where, you know container, and then if they had their phone out, the teacher would take the phone and would keep it for an indiscriminate amount of time. Versus then, well, Matt at the the school, the principal on the first day would give his phone number to all the students and say, if you if you have any issues or whatever, give me a ring. So uh, that really kind of uh, epitomized the, the context. And of course, there's other things in in, in different places and uh, in between a whole variety of uh, uh, different experiences of, of phones. Yeah, I mean, just in terms of my personal experience, the nature of discipline, how it varies at different schools, was the most shocking thing to me. It seems to have been to a lot of the viewers of the show as well. Um, and I think one of the other things, too, is there's a lot of things that happen that people aren't willing to talk about or necessarily uh, uh, articulate. And there's always that concern when you're doing an in-depth story like this. Are you missing the story? Is the thing like, you know, something that people don't... Uh, uh, um, uh, articulate, so, so to speak. Um, so the other work, of course, that you have to do in, in any kind of time-based thing, journalism, documentary, or whatever, is, is introduce some drama so that people want to hang on. They want to see what happens, what happens next. And so out of those uh, uh, trends and juxtapositions uh, that came into, as we said, selective enrollment, which really came to be kind of the... Uh, uh, the uh, contest show type appeal of it. Are they going to get into the, the schools or not? And that's kind of how we frame the, uh, 
the, the series. Some of the other things that definitely came up uh, as we profiled some of the uh, faculty at the school was, is the school going to close um, because of the, they aren't meeting uh, uh, state requirements and, and whatnot. Uh, another thing we followed was evaluating new programs they're introducing. Are they being effective? Are uh, is performance going up? Are students being engaged? Um, pressure to participate in extracurriculars and, and perform well, and uh, uh, home issues, domestic issues, uh, issues with friends and family. So th those are kind of where we came in uh, to introduce those more traditional narrative uh, uh, approaches and give more really shape to this representation of uh, 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 kind of what we were trying to show is the, the reality of uh, educational experiences across the, the uh, Chicago land. Yeah, and uh, you know, like uh, we said, our goal was to uh, make this comparative show. So we kind of, I, I think what our role is when you just take all this raw film data and try to make it into a statement, it's a little bit different than when you're dealing with science. But our schema was a, a thematic one where the episodes of the show are uh, called things like uh, five students, five communities, five middle schools, five classes, five administrations, and it goes on like that. And the reason we did that instead of one school where you meet a couple kids who are meant to represent different types of personalities is uh, we essentially wanted to appeal to everyone where you're forced to think about your own role in the system that we're presenting. Which kid do you identify with the most? And I've met people who identified with all, all five of the kids' backgrounds. We thought that'd be a more useful way for you to contemplate uh, the disparities we see. Yeah. So of course, since it's something about data, we also have to turn that back into ourselves. You know, and is it working? Are we getting traction? Are there numbers backing it up? Um, and coming from kind of an independent filmmaker uh, background, where it's like you have a successful like screening, if like ten people show up at <laughs> anthology uh, archives. Of, <laughs> The, the fact that we've got like you know thousands of views on YouTube for us is like a sure sign that it's uh, that it's working. So that that's one form of a metric that we've been uh, uh, pleased about. Um, another would be potentially impacts on, on on policy. I think kind of the the golden standard for kind of documentary uh, uh, filmmaking is to have something that's cited as like you know, impacting how people are thinking about it or talking about what's what's going on. Haven't gotten that. Uh, <laughs> uh, well, I would say, I mean, the, no, <laughs> I mean, but the, uh, I, I don't think a, a massive restructuring of the whole educational structure of society is going to happen, but we, uh, the, the consulting we did with real social scientists was minimal, but we met with some researchers at the UC uh, Consortium on School Research, and we're both graduates of UC, too, it seems like there's a lot of you guys here. And uh, you know they thought that the you know elementary, middle, to high school transition was a good focus for the show, was an interesting fault line. And then from their research on the topic, kind of met what we were showing, which is there's a big information divide, and uh, a lot of kids at uh, you know all but the the best few schools get a sense of oh there's these schools out there called things like Whitney Young, and maybe I should apply to them, but they don't always get information about what exactly is involved in that. So we at least, I think, did a little bit of public service, which is we made a uh, kind of concise infographic video about all these categories of uh, test scores you need to go through for that process. And it's actually got a lot of uh, traction. I think one of the uh, clearest uh, uh, shows of, of success for the, the series was while it was initially intended as an internet experiment for WTTW, they were so pleased with the uh, content that they played it on TV three times. And uh, our, the climax, the last episode, actually beat uh, the ratings for Check Please, which is their like best show. <laughs> uh, we saw that as a sign that, like, you know, uh, if like education policy, social issues can be restaurants. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, this is, uh, it's like a two and a half hour mini series, basically, and we've got about. 15,000 views on YouTube. It hasn't gone viral yet. Maybe you guys can help us. Maybe some, one of you is doing that right now. Um, but then um, the broadcast reached about 190,000 people, which was great. And then I'd say, too, there's an interesting factor that uh, data collection, data sharing has not caught up with the proliferation of new media. Because this content's also available on uh, what, what's called over the top. Uh, so, like on your iTunes, uh, sorry, Apple TV, Roku, stuff like that. 
and a lot of people are encountering it there, but we have no idea how many. There's apparently no way to get this data. <laughs> and also, um, other public television channels around the country ran it on this thing called the World Channel. So, um, like 50 public television channels, but they have no central way to tell us or anyone how many people watch it. It's another project for you. And of course, uh, presenting at a presentation, we've done a number of things like this, and even had some workshops where we talked about the data and compared it to what you see in the show. And of course, serving as a reference for uh, uh, future projects, and we're always developing new web series. Uh, uh, perhaps somebody here has some great idea for a web series or something we should do a uh, documentary about. We'd love to, to talk about anything about that. So I'd love to talk more, but you guys have lots of awesome hacking to do. And uh, I should probably let you get to that. Do you want to pull up the web page just to sure. see where it is? Um, I'll pull that up. And yeah, it, maybe we can one yeah. question. Go ahead. Anybody have questions? <laughs> yes, what sir. was the cost for this project, even just a ballpark? Sure. Yeah, sure. Um, it was pretty <laughs> ambitious for a web series, but I think you know, on the smaller side for like an actual TV series, it was about seventy thousand dollars. Part of which we raised on Kickstarter. Thank you. Uh, was there anything that um, you were really surprised about as you went into it, or there, was there any like big revelation as part of the process of doing this? By the way, I have a kid who's in the eighth grade in Walmart, so. Yeah, and, and no. the principal does tell all the kids, this is my cell phone number. <laughs> You're confirming it. <laughs> Your kids, child might be in the show. That he gets a certain <laughs> amount of Right. You know, <laughs> my son likes to say, hey, DP, what's up? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, I just take that and describe. But I was just wondering if you, if it was just like, oh, this is what I expected, or in the process you really saw. Uh, I do have something to say about that. Uh, real quick, this is where you find the show. It's called Central Standard. It's on YouTube. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the concept was that we were going to make a multi-season series called Central Standard that was about Chicago's uh, institutions in transition. I guess we didn't say that at the start, but the first series was about education. Season two, uh, not not booked yet. <laughs> um, in terms of surprise for me, I'd say it was definitely what I mentioned, which was just uh, the discipline is hardly the word for it, but just the um, methods of keeping the order in three out of the five schools that we filmed in. Um, the CPS school on the southwest side, the Uno Charter School, and the South Suburban School, which was really this, everyone's wearing a uniform, uh, no talking at any point during the day. Everybody's movements are choreographed, uh, which was something I didn't remember doing after about like the fourth grade, you know, so this kind of thing was a bit of a shock to me, but I think it relates obviously to the climate we've got where a school reformer has a, a formula for getting scores up and uh, that has consequences for what daily life is like. That's where us documentary filmmakers come in to say, uh, you think you already know what this is about, but let's just show it to you and maybe you'll learn something. And the way that they're reflected too, not only in the everyday experience of the, the students, but then also in the, the teacher training, that the uh, you know they get a certain number of uh, training days before the school year begins, and at certain schools, all the conversation is about is how are we can control the movement of these bodies through space and nothing about enrichment or these new programs that we're going to be, that they're just like literally it's not time because the other thing is uh, prioritized more as a precedent that's needed to get, you know, achieve any sort of learning whatsoever. Which is, and there's a lot good. of pressure with the testing and stuff. I, I have a great respect for all the teachers and administrators we filmed with too, and I mean, I, it's pretty hard to put yourself in their shoes, right? Just uh, it said more about me that I was so shocked by all this, but it is a seemingly growing trend that was strange to me. It's curious how long production took, and then also what you shot it on. Yeah, uh, so we began the pre-production in uh, spring of 2013. Began shooting in June of 2013, and then did the last shooting in May of 2014. Altogether, we had about 70 shooting days, and uh, we shot it all with uh, Canon DSLRs and uh, Tascam uh, DR680 and Sennheiser wireless labs. The preferred lenses were uh, 24 to 70 f2.8. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> <laughs> if we did it now, we'd probably use a C100 because we've done more commercials. So we 
But um, we took these very small cameras into the school to try to make less of a huge annoying splash than we might otherwise. <laughs> what cameras did you give the kids? We gave them, um, uh, they were some Canon uh, Vixia uh, uh, cameras. It's about 200 bucks. Uh, and uh, one with the post screen. Yeah, I'm going to zoom. We thought that'd be. Uh, and yeah, it's kind of like a video diary uh, portion for the students in this show, also. Was it just the 24 to 70 that you guys used? Or you were going to say something, but. Um, um, no, no, no. Well, if we didn't, now we're doing a C100. But yeah, yeah. 20, we definitely like came up with this visual style where we wanted. You know, all the lending to be normal and as close to the subjects as, as possible, so that we wanted to contrast as much as possible with a lot of news coverage of schools, which tends to be, yo, I'm a camera dude with CCS, <laughs> and you know, it's on my shoulder, and I'm zooming in to get the close up. But instead, to get the camera close, try and do a lot of low angle stuff where you feel like you're a student in the, in the classroom instead. How about right there? Do you think that the filming? Impacted the students in any way? I, mean, I know you went, you tried to find students who wouldn't be negatively impacted. Right. But did it impact their relationships? Well, of course, in a myriad of ways that we could never unpack. <laughs> <laughs> it's like inevitable, and that's such a big issue with documentary. You know, since like you started doing it, where it's like as soon as there's this person with a camera, like everything changes, and you adopt strategies to try and mitigate that and like you know control for it where you develop relationships with the students with the staff at the at the schools you try to have a smaller you know crew smaller camera um but uh yeah it's a, a constant negotiation and a constant thing to be aware of and checking in about um in the Actually, the, what you're looking at at the top is the last episode of the show, and what we did was we brought all the five kids together for this kind of black box Charlie Rose sort of thing. And um, <laughs> that having worked on documentaries in multiple subjects before, we would not done this kind of thing, but we're really keen to that to have them meet and analyze each other's experiences and how it differed from their own. And we also had them talk about what it was like to be in the documentary. And about us, what we miss, yeah. you know, if we represented them accurately, how they how they felt. About they had a lot of good and bad things to say about us. Did they see the films before they talked to them? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we screened it for them. There, it, uh, being a web series, too, it started coming out while we were still uh, working on it. <coughs> All right. So, you guys kind of like, uh, I talked to Russell earlier, but I was wondering if we could go ahead go a little bit more depth into like how the experience of the kids themselves, like how different from the other experiences, like, and your own kind of like memories of going through. Uh, like green screen. <laughs> Can you repeat the question? He wants to hear about how the uh, student experience differed with our own. Um, I mean, that's a good, uh, a really good point in terms of it also brings up the personal biases, you know, that a filmmaker would have. Like, what things you're seeing are you going to be cued in and, and focus on because it either contrasts or uh, reaffirms your own uh, uh, experiences. Um, I mean, yeah, I didn't have any very like, memorable. <laughs> I'd say, I mean, just we cast, obviously, uh, different kind of um, families from different demographic backgrounds going to different kinds of school models in the city and the suburbs. And I'd say definitely for Ben and me, we both grew up in the burbs where uh, property taxes are high. You go to the school that you went, you moved there to go to. So I mean, we identified in our personal background with that student. But um, it was interesting when we were developing the series, that was kind of the one thing that kept coming up on the chopping block. They're like, well, this urban education show, don't put this little med school in it. Everybody already knows about their great school, and we're really adamant that that should be there, too. There's not much of a contrast if you don't see it. What did you cut on the top of that? Avid on the front. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our editor cut on Avin that it was no study Yeah. Did you have any uh, emotional reactions that you thought would be, would be echoed by the kids, but they didn't really have? Like, I imagine I would be pretty angry about the discipline <coughs> that you described, but, I, but maybe kids who live in it don't react as much. That was definitely something we represented. The, uh, uh, the discipline uh, that we were referencing was largely at uh, the, the school card uh, Marquette, which is one of the AUSL uh, uh, turnaround uh, schools, and it's kind of a big part of their 
uh, philosophy. And the student, uh, Gina, and her family really appreciated it because of the incredible contrast between how the school was before. One of the anecdotes that one of the administrators shares in the show is about how uh, te a teacher used to walk to get from one side of the school to the other on the roof so that they wouldn't have to go through the school and engage with the, the students. That's how kind of afraid they were of the, the climate and kind of how out of, out of control it was. Um, so, it, you know, it's the kind of thing we didn't represent in the in the show, but uh, you have to give uh, credence uh, uh, to like these people's experience, and they, you know, say that it's uh, better for them. It's hard to it's yeah. hard to argue with that, you know, based on their experience. Well, did the kids have emotional reactions? Uh, it was really interesting to work with the kids at this particular age, and uh, they're like really amazingly capable of self-reflecting about certain things, and then sort of like surprisingly not about other things. And, um, but then, yeah, this kind of event where we had them talk to each other was just like amazing in terms of them seeing things that they had thought about in their own experience before. Any last question? Yeah, of course. Yeah, so uh, there's a, who did you guys think was about as the audience for this documentary? A PBS, it's on PBS's website, uh, like I'm sorry, older, older demographic, wider demographic, richer demographic. <coughs> like, what is it that you thought that these people needed to know about selective enrollment and why? All right, that's a, uh, a really good uh, uh, question. Um, it's a really deep one, and I mean, uh, that when you go about trying to pitch a project and get it funded and like actually brought into the world, those are the kind of questions everyone wants to know. But um, I mean, in large part, I feel like uh, me anyway, try to make stuff and I'm not a very good marketer and I don't like to try to make it <laughs> my job. I would try, I'm not trying to pigeonhole the audience. I'm hoping it could be as broad as possible. But that anecdote that I relayed before about like, not having the wealthy suburban school in the show actually sort of came out of that. They're like, that's our demographic, and they don't want to hear about that. They want to hear about the, the other or something. <laughs> but um, I mean, yeah, honestly, we wanted it, I wanted it to be for everyone, and I thought this is a relevant question for everyone now or in the future, where you, which school are you going to send for everybody? Yeah, I would say uh, it's a different uh, style of, of, of presenting media than, say, a piece that. Uh, you might hear that's about this new thing that's opening or this new policy in education where you hear a policy head that's talking about it and then you cut to a B-roll shot of the, the student in the classroom for a second. But it's really just about the, the written work, you know, that uh, this new thing is out there and we have this guy who's just talking about it. So it's really uh, appealing with a different mode of address to somebody who's either in a documentary as a, a medium that gives you a more visceral experience of a place and a, a feel and a moment and a character. Uh, so this the same kind of uh, mode, kind of a hyper-local, I, I guess, mode of address of a lot of the reality TV or, or, or other documentary or, or, or stuff that you know people watch all the time. That's kind of narrative character driven, but then that also has a, a, a component to being socially uh, uh, relevant. So our, our audience would be you know any all media consumers uh, ever, <laughs> uh, which is always what you. Uh, what you want with a specific focus on people that really care about education because maybe they have kids, maybe they're thinking, should I live in Uptown? Should I move to Wilmette? Where are the schools like in these two places? I hear all these people talking about it. I'd really like to see what it looks like inside the school. Oh, I can watch a show now. I can see what it looks like. Um, you have any idea if you are successful in reaching outside of PBS's core audience? Yeah, so one of the uh, strategies we've been kind of advocating for is more advertising because it's such a, uh, 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 what's the term I'm looking for? Uh, it's used so often, cluttered, crowded media space. And uh, so, no, I think uh, uh, we haven't reached a, a big of an audience with the, the show as we would. As we would. Yeah, I mean, we have a limited access to knowing who the audience is, but I mean, in terms of the kind of just events we Done and things. I mean, I think it has a somewhat universal appeal. That I've met a lot of, uh, you know, Hispanic kids from the Southwest side and their families, African American kids and their families from the South side. Are like, yeah, I went through exactly this. I'm so glad to see it represented. I've had that experience at least a couple times. Okay. And I don't know if you're taking any more questions, but just one thought I've had is 
that educate, you know, you're saying who is the audience, like anyone who lives in Chicago in my in Yeah, but that's not who watches the PBS. You know? And so, yeah, I was wondering if you felt like you could reach to everyone. Who, I came to Chicago from the Northeast. So just the character of the city is created in part by the schools. And, but I find it really frustrating where I live for people to see that. So I don't know. I'm going to be really curious watching this. Did you find that it opens people's eyes to our education as Chicago land people or just the where should I live so my kid goes to X school? It's really hard to get that bigger picture thing going. But. We, we've heard a lot of good things about the, the contrast. I, I would say for us that definitely this initiative was uh, uh, a step in the right direction on w TPW's part to try and engage those other urban audiences that they have not had so much success maybe traditionally with, with, with reaching. So, yeah. yeah, I think it, it has a certainly strong local interest and it's not something we're sort of ashamed about. That's what we really want us to do. And I, I mean, I think it would interest people from other cities in the country. Them finding it can be a little difficult. Like I said, it was broadcast nationally though, which was great. And probably especially people who already have some kind of inkling about stuff like school reform and reconstitution and charter movements and stuff like that. They're going to find it interesting. But I think anyone who's just considering new trends in urban life, <laughs> I don't know. Um, this has been really fun. Thanks for putting up with us. Um, I hope you will watch the show. Speaking of audience, I don't know if it's encountered its audience. Could you please tweet about it? <laughs> so it will. Um, I have a tiny plug, too, for the other part of the night. I'm working on another project that has a data-driven interactive component, and I'm really hoping anyone in this room might know something about getting uh, deed information from the Cook County Recorder of Deeds, if that is your specialty. I would like to talk to you. Cool. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you.